Hello, so I thought I'd make this quick video. This is for um, somebody I have met online called Tommy, who was kind enough to, uh, he's a regular viewer actually, at our Scotch Corner blog, scotchcorner.blogspot.com. And Tommy's always leaving us comments there, takes his time, takes time out to uh, comment on, on the artwork of the group there. And he had mentioned that he had some pieces up at his blog and was looking for comments. So I thought instead of, I was typing and typing, I was trying to explain something, and I thought I'd just make a video, I'd screen cap this. So, what I've done, Tommy, is I've had a look at your artwork, and the main thing I think you could improve on is the sense of depth within the scene that you're painting. I really like that you're going for a, a ambitious scene with multiple characters, there's a story there, um, I'm talking about the one with the orc and the party of characters. Um, Maybe I'll link up in the in the notes to the video. Tommy will know the one I'm talking about. So what I've done, something that's available these days that's really, really handy is SketchUp. And I don't know if you use it, Tommy, or anyone else out there that happens to watch this, but SketchUp is a brilliantly simple tool. It's from Google. It's a 3D modeling application, free to download, free to use. You can pay a lot of money for the more advanced features, but just as a little visualization tool, I think it's wonderful. So what I've done here is I've built a little scene that's my version of, of pretty much what looks like going on in Tommy's painting. And I've built it using the very simple tools. Very, very simple to use SketchUp. This is not a SketchUp demo, so it, it's that simple. There's no point. But it, a little bit of practice, and you can very quickly put things together. Um, I just used the basic tools, built these shapes into a sort of little bit of terrain. Um, I got these trees, I downloaded those from the, the SketchUp warehouse, which you can just click a button at the top and get access to all kinds of models. Bung those in. I've set a nice sketchy style. You can There's a window for styles. I want a nice sketchy one that just doesn't... When it's just plain geometry, it kind of interferes, I think, for me. I like things to look a bit sketchy. It just helps me ignore the medium almost, if you like, and get the information I want. So, in Tommy's picture, he's got the adventurers coming down this path, and in the foreground, there's an orc dude, and I've kind of figured the orc is sitting somewhere on these rocks, rocks, this little hummock I put in the foreground there. Now, of course, what SketchUp lets you do, at the moment, I think we've got a view that something like this, the path comes diagonally right across the canvas, and it kind of cuts the canvas in two. Now, with SketchUp, having built the scene, we can move the scene around and perhaps get a different angle that would give us more depth. And just using the different tools, we can find some other angles and just try them out. Equally, the process of building the environment throws up all kinds of funky, happy accidents that you might not otherwise have come across. For example, I just started to, to build the rocks more quickly. I was starting to get into all this, these triangles and joining up different planes, and it was all getting a bit um, contrived. Um, so I went for the polygon tool that at the moment just random is set to make big hexagons or hexagons and you set the size of them. And I just introduced these big hexagons that you can see at the back there and actually I thought oh yeah they make some really cool rock shapes you know those undercut boulders and you start to get some really good ideas from that that would just vary uh, your landscape a little bit and that can send you off a reference for boulders and stuff also something that I thought was interesting as I was doing this is in Tommy's picture the characters are kind of almost walking either behind a ridge or in a kind of recessed ditched path and it's cutting them off in the middle of their legs not always a good idea that, um, and again, it separates the characters from their adversary who's in the foreground, whereas we really want to see them interacting with their environment through the snow scene they're walking through. We want their feet in the snow and out of the snow. Um, we want the snow as maybe an obstacle to them. So they need to be a bit more engaged, I felt, with the snow now, and, and the scenery indeed. Now, as I made this SketchUp model, um, I put the path in and I really had to think about where well, where does the path go? And I kind of thought, I don't want it to go right across the canvas. I want it to come forward. So we've got this sense of, of a deep space and recession within space that, and the characters are gonna, it gives us an idea of the timeline that the characters are gonna most likely proceed down the path towards us. So, you know, just the simple arrangement of the path, that's kind of cool, um, which I wouldn't have thought of necessarily if I hadn't been building a model. I mean, this should come out in your sketching. You know, you should you should try all these different things quite naturally about your sketching, but it's not always easy to visualize a 3D environment that you 
trying to portray and, and sketch up. I mean, heck, I do this with Lego bricks and a digital camera sometimes. If I've got a complex environment, I pinch my son's Duplo and I build a model and I photograph it. Or I've done it with cardboard. You can do it with clay. It's really easy because you can just mold it into big shapes. And you can just set different angles. Now, a really handy thing, oh yeah, I was going to say about this path, because I've cut done it winding down that adds a bit more detail that it's winding um, and you can start to create perhaps zigzags across the canvas depending on where you cropped this this image you could get some nice zigzags that, that that's always just a nice compositional device if it's zigzag the eye likes that you know um, you can also move things around very easily um, but something I was going to say it was within SketchUp that's maybe a bit of an improvement over the old Lego model or clay that you can do this with uh, with lamps at home um, is the shadow settings. And I pulled up the shadow setting pane here and we can change the time of day. Um, and we can do all sorts. We can change how bright, light and dark it is. We can set the time of year. I mean, this is more of interest to people who are making a lot of people make models of, of real world things. And they want to set them exactly in the right, you know, right sort of orientation, north, south, wise, and, and then light them, you know. Um, and it's, it's a very nice device. But if we just play with it, I mean, we don't have to be. We're fancy artists. We can do what we want. But again, it gives you some ideas, you know, that, hey, a big shadow of a tree coming across. Although Tommy scene is a snow scene, so the light may be too diffuse for this kind of thing. Um, but hey, we can go for some December lighting. It's a little bit darker. Um Again, gives you ideas, breaks up the canvas. Instead of using, say, the path to zigzag across, what about a big shadow? Um, you can also look, look, we can occlude huge parts of the scene. If the sun was going down and it's clipping these cliffs over to the left, that gives us just a different feel again. Um, and it just gives you ideas of, to bring a little bit more um, sort of depth in a lot of different ways. Depth in terms of the space within the image and depth in terms of what you're portraying the idea that you know is it early morning is it is it night time is it evening um, and again just I find tools like SketchUp can just help kick up those ideas and certainly I'm never too precious about it, it a very quick model like I say five minutes this model to build um, and I would if I found or, or would generally oh look at me stumbling <laughs> generally what I would do next is um, export a 2D graphic and I would I would basically line up the camera a whole load of different ways and shoot a lot of different shots. Um, this was an invaluable tool working on the, the One Ring, which is the forthcoming Lord of the Rings game from Cubicle 7. I set up, I built Rivendell, I built uh, Lake Town in SketchUp because both of the client wanted to see multiple shots. If you want to see five different versions of Lake Town from different angles, we had the design down. You want to see, you know, what does it look like from up high? What does it look down low? Um, I never sent in any just sketch up models. I don't think that would be particularly fair to the client, but it helped me just as a guide um, and to get ideas. And I could trace it off. I would export a 2D graphic and then I would trace it off in Photoshop and very quickly dispense. I don't use the, the, the sketch up work itself. I mean, as you can see, it's very, very rudimentary, but handy stuff. Look, get some, what about a nice bird's eye shot there? Good, good stuff. Very handy. And if you get a bit stuck or you just you feel your scenes aren't necessarily having the depth or the perhaps realism is a difficult word. I mean, I'm not, not particularly interested in painting realistic pictures, but kind of having that believability. And it can throw out lots of funky ideas. OK, so I think I've gone on enough and this will take forever to upload if I don't get it done. So cheers. Hope that hope that was some help to you, Tommy, and anyone else that happened to be watching my incredible SketchUp model. Bumble Beasel. Bumble Beasel. Bumble Beasel.